Good morning. Uh, today I want to present uh, the limestone collection of uh, Isernia lapineta sites. So, and uh, the experimental uh, things that we have done during this year. So, Isernia lapineta, it's uh, a middle Pleistocene site that is dated uh, 600,000 years ago, and it's located in uh, Molise region, that is in the center south of Italy. And um, they have found uh, different levels uh, of uh, uh, human occupation at the sites. Uh, that uh, where hominins uh, were um, doing uh, mainly butchery activities uh, around uh, a, pale a dynamic paleo lake. The um, only human remains that uh, they have found up to now is uh, a human uh, teeth uh, that is coming from the Live Tree Colluvio, that uh, it's the same level. Uh, uh, from which I will uh, talking about today. So the uh, oh, the um, lithic collection was mainly studied uh, in the eighteen nineteen, and uh, um, was mainly studied uh, the uh, the flint uh, more than the limestones, uh, and um, this collection have a. Uh, uh, unipolar uh, unifacial uh, management at uh, the Vitage, but uh, in the last uh, study of uh, Gallotti, she underlined the present even of uh, uh, discoidal debitage. So in this in the study I undertake this year, I was focused more on the limestones material because it was less studied. And uh, so I organized this uh, study before doing all the uh, technotypological analysis. And when, uh, when I have a general idea about the collection, I organize all the experimental protocol. So uh, I studied uh, 748 pieces. And uh, the first things to give a general idea about uh, the raw material, uh, we have found uh, uh, five uh, different lithologies of limestones that uh, I make this study on, mainly for uh, uh, helping me to find some uh, refitting, but we haven't found for the moment. And uh, we note uh, that uh, the hominins were uh, used mainly the uh, limestone that were more present in the environment, uh, but anyway, that, that had uh, good properties for, uh, for knapping. And uh, another important thing uh, was that we divided the collection uh, the wall cobbles and even the cores uh, where the amount of cortex allow out to do, uh, to do this uh, in uh, um, morphodimensional categories. Uh, and we found that uh, the collection is composed uh, by uh, flat small cobbles, uh, medium size flat uh, convex cobbles uh, and uh, cubic, uh, uh, cubic cobbles. The collection is composed by uh, wall cobbles, uh, percussion tools, uh, canapet pieces. Between uh, them, we have a course, a retached course, uh, loosely configured tools uh, and chopper course, uh, flakes uh, and fragments. Uh, so uh, I decided to um, focus the experimental things on the observation of uh, percussion instrument and uh, uh, the knapped pieces. Uh, percussion instrument for uh, help us to identificate uh, Hammerstone and Anvil in uh, the archaeological connection for document the type of uh, damage that we can find in the limestones collection and uh, even explore the different gestures uh, looking at the different position of the percussion marks. Uh, and understand uh, the role uh, that was played by the anvils uh, and uh, looking at the experimental material, uh, even uh, observe if there is a uh, uh, size relation between the hammers uh, and uh, the knapped cores. From the point of view of the uh, knapped pieces, uh, when I was looking at the collection, I note that uh, uh, the small uh, flat cobbles uh, have like a recurrence in their management and they were extracting uh, a few flakes, only one or two flakes, only in one of the extremities. The same pattern was followed by the medium sized cobbles, the ovals one, but were totally different the management of the bigger cobbles that uh, they were uh, exploded uh, always in unifacial, unipolar way, but more in a periphery peripheral way. So we try to reproduce this pattern in the experimental collection. So 
uh, we recollect the raw material really close to the Isernia site, a few kilometers away in the different uh, the alluvial deposits. And uh, um, all the material we, we, we bring at the lab was mainly of the same uh, morphologies uh, that we found in the collection. So always uh, small flat, uh, medium size and uh, blocks. Uh, and we, we use uh, the ellipsoidal one uh, like uh, Hammerstones. So we organize uh, 19 experiments, uh, 15 focused on clamping activity and uh, four mainly for see if there was uh, some difference in the percussion marks uh, uh, fracturing bones. And so we reproduce the same things um, using both technique. We were two operators. Uh, we use uh, on an anvil and freehand uh, technique for a process all the kind of morphologies. And when uh, we observe the, the hammerstones, of course, we document uh, the hammerstones uh, like uh, each piece uh, before, uh, during, and uh, after use. So we document uh, the weight of handling uh, the hammers uh, and then all the kind of percussion mark uh, we had and the collocation of them. Comparing the hammerstones uh, with, the, um, with the ones that we have in the collection, we found in the collection, we note uh, that uh, there is uh, in both cases, uh, there are uh, differences in the size of the cobbles. Uh, but uh, even if we have the same type of percussion marks, uh, picketage, surface scarring, uh, accidental removals, uh, double faceted breakage, uh, there is in the archaeological uh, material uh, more variability even in the morphology, but more than this uh, in the location of the percussion marks. So we note that probably in Isernia that were manipulated the, the cobbles in more different way than ones uh, we, we have done. And uh, looking at uh, the uh, morphology, no, the dimension of the hammers and the cores that we ex explode, we note that the same color are, there is, are cores and uh, hammers. We note that more or less we use hammers that have similar dimension uh, of the, with, like the cores. We identified uh, even a possible anvil that uh, the marks, the percussion marks are uh, uh, distributed but localized in a small uh, surface of three, four centimeters square. And, uh, and nothing here, uh, I show only a few of experiment with the bones and we note that uh, uh, of course a bones you can broke only with a few uh, hit. And uh, so you don't have any kind of percussion marks, but if you don't position it, for example, the bone in a good way and you can't broke uh, and you continue to, to hit the bone, uh, finally you can uh, get some of them. So looking at the course, uh, we explode more the bigger cobbles uh, than the smaller one. So they, we reduce more the volume of the bigger. And uh, comparing uh, the, the course, uh, the experimental with the archaeological one, we note that uh, both show uh, some uh, typical characteristic of uh, bipolar on anvil with uh, the double impact points. Uh, but of course, uh, like we know, uh, bipolar on anvil can have a high variability of morphologies. Uh, and we got even some morphology that uh, um, ended with the uh, dihedral point that for us uh, will be really interesting in, in the next step of the experiments uh, because we had. Uh, different uh, diedral morphology in the archaeological collection. Looking at the bigger cores uh, was easily for, uh, to knap the medium size cores uh, by free hands, uh, but was uh, more difficult to knap uh, the, uh, the bigger size cobbles. So we were, this one were knapped by an anvil. Uh, the feeling that we have that uh, uh, this kind of course uh, that have this peripheral management uh, can be uh, some uh, morphotype uh, is because uh, these uh, were abandoned uh, when the course have uh, still a high amount of, uh, uh, of mass uh, and more they were abandoned when they have uh, a better angle than, uh, than before. Uh, and looking to the archaeological material, we noted that this kind of morphology with uh, this uh, semi-peripheral management uh, had uh, like uh, uh, 
micro removals around this edge that we haven't found on the experimental one. And uh, for example, uh, there is an exception. This is an exceptional piece uh, that's really nice. We noted that here, for example, um, they don't have real uh, the interest to extract the flakes because after a few uh, millimeter, they get broken because for the change of the raw material of the plaquette of silex that is inside. Flakes uh, were uh, really similar, but it, we, we got uh, uh, more cortical flakes and uh, semi-cortical flakes. There are some differences between in the size of the flakes. We have smaller flakes in the experimental, but this because uh, can be for, for the recollection criteria they had in the site. And uh, so the experimental um, activity we have done uh, this year uh, allowed us to facilitate uh, to found uh, the uh, Hammerson in the archaeological con collection. Uh, we developed a database of the Isernal Pineta percussion damage. Uh, we underlined the role of the anvils. Uh, and uh, we haven't found really hard percussion marks when we were uh, knapping, uh, broken the, the big bones. And uh, yes, that uh, in Isaria and La Pineta, they probably do other kind of activity with this kind of percussion tools because they were handling them in a different way. So the next uh, step, now that we have this uh, collection, we want to explore more uh, the diedral angles, uh, because it uh, looks like, uh, given a look so to the collection, that uh, there are some users that actually I saw only in a macro, macro way. So we have to apply traceology and uh, microanalysis on the uh, diedral angles uh, and explore more this uh, kind of morphologies that have uh, this uh, uh, micro retouch around the arch that can possible from user. 